Treaty Day is celebrated by Nova Scotians annually on October 1 in recognition of the treaty signed between the British Empire and the MIKMAQ people. The first treaty was signed in 1725 after Father Rail's War. The final treaties of 1760-61 marked the end of 75 years of regular warfare between the MIKMAQ and the British. The treaty-making process of 1760-61 ended with the burying the hatchet ceremony. The treaties were only formally recognized by the Supreme Court of Canada once they were enshrined in the Canadian Constitution in 1982. The first Treaty Day occurred in 1986, the year after the Supreme Court upheld the Peace Treaty of 1752 signed by Jean-Baptiste Cope and Governor Peregrine Hobson. Since that time there have been numerous judicial decisions that have upheld the other treaties in the Supreme Court, the most recognized being the Donald Marshall case. The day October 1st was chosen because the Treaty of 1752 designated October 1st as the date on which the MIKMAW people would receive gifts from the Crown to renew their friendship and submissions. The purpose of Treaty Day is also to promote public awareness about the MIKMAW culture and heritage for all citizens of Nova Scotia. History of Treaties According to historian John G. Reed, the treaties of 1760-61, while they contained statements of MIKMAW submission to the British Crown, what is known of the surrounding discussions, combined with the strong evidence of later MIKMAW statements, indicates that a friendly and reciprocal relationship was the real intent. The MIKMAW leaders who came initially to Halifax in 1760 had clear goals that centered on the making of peace, the establishment of a secure and well-regulated trade in commodities such as furs, and an ongoing friendship with the British Crown. In return, they offered their own friendship and a tolerance of limited British settlement, although without any formal land surrender. To fulfill the friendly and reciprocal intent of the treaties, further British settlement of land would need to be negotiated and, in exchange for accommodating the existing British settlements, presents would be given to the MIKMAQ. The documents summarizing the peace agreements failed to establish specific territorial limits on the expansion of British settlements but they assured the MIKMAQ access to the natural resources that had long sustained them along the region's coasts and in the woods. The intent of the treaties began to erode with the arrival of the New England planters and United Empire loyalists. This migration into the region created significant economic, environmental and cultural pressures on the MIKMAQ, as their military power waned in the beginning of the 19th century. The MIKMAQ people made explicit appeals to the British to honour the reciprocal intent of the treaties and the duty of the British to give presents to the MIKMAQ for occupying MIKMAKI. In response, the British offered charity or, the word most often used by government officials, relief, and relief always came with strings attached. The MIKMAQ must give up their way of life and begin to settle on farms and their children were to be sent for education to British schools. Gabriel Sillaboy was the first MIKMAQ elected as Grand Chief and the first to fight for treaty recognition, specifically, the Treaty of 1752 in the Supreme Court of Nova Scotia. The treaties did not gain legal status until they were enshrined into the Canadian Constitution in 1982. R. V. Simon overruled R. V. Sillaboy which had held that Aboriginal peoples had no capacity to enter into treaties, and thus that the numbered treaties were void. A variety of non-land rights cases, anchored on the Constitution Act 1982, have also been influential. Every October 1, Treaty Day, is now celebrated by Nova Scotians.